Welcome to the Chop Team. I'm your host, Seth the Dark Child. I'm your host, Twins Inc. Our show is about two guys and any friends that happen to come over with a topic that we want to chop up. This is our barbershop style podcast. We discuss it all. If the fellas at the shop will go in on it, we will. Let's chop it up. We back, we back. Hope everyone's having a good Sunday. Or when, you know, this might be Wednesday here's this here the show, but we do live recordings every Sunday at 3 p.m. So tune in for the live recording. But we have Quest Boogie in the building, Seth the Dark Child. And our guest actually has the topic today. Which we want to talk about today, Quest Boogie? All right, we're going to talk about the destruction of the black community, the black man and the foundation of the black community and black family. <clears throat> So, you know, we were talking together, and uh, this is something I'm extremely passionate about. You know, just talking to some some friends or colleagues or associates of mine, the topic came up. You know, they're from different backgrounds, Caucasian or, or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they start bringing up the fact of the statistics that you hear that are tossed around about black folks, mm-hmm. right? You know, they're prone to violence or criminals or black they or make up... Friends. Black on black crime, where they make up this percentage of crime, so on and so forth. You know, and I had to break it down to him and educate him because he didn't know. Obviously, he doesn't have these type of people that have these type of conversations. All the people he tends to hang out with have those other conversations that we hear about in that other community. But ultimately, I had to break it down to him. From slavery, you know, they gave us our freedom, but they didn't really give us our freedom, right? Right. So Jim Crow law. And things like that. Now, you had black people and black families come together and start building their own, building their own schools, building their own businesses, building up their own communities. Mm -hmm. You hear stories about Black Wall Street, which was burned to the ground Mm -hmm. because because of a a story about a woman in an elevator. They burned a whole black community to the ground. It wasn't because of that situation. It was probably false because we know based on history, a lot of it is false. Right. Example, Emmett Till, right? Mm -hmm. But... They were jealous of the wealth that black people were accumulating amongst themselves, especially poor white folks, right? Mm -hmm. But even wealthier white folks did not want to see what they considered inferior people having the same power or more power than them. Mm -hmm. So they found an excuse to destroy our community. It happened in Roseville in Florida, Mm -hmm. and there's dozens and dozens and dozens of other towns and lands in there. Exactly. Let's throw out a couple. Atlanta, 1906, Atlanta race riots. Um, Le- hey, um, Lake Lanier is on top of a on top of a city called Oscarville. Mm-hmm. They just flooded the whole town, whole town and made a reservoir. It's funny how hundreds of people die. I mean, dozens of people die in Lake Lanier every year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fine, anyway. kind of yep. But. Yes, the I'm sorry. I just want no words. Yeah, so it's, it's tons of examples, right? Tons. So then, you know, you got Jim Crow laws, which mm-hmm. were created to disenfranchise our people and really to keep us in bondage, technically, we're right? Made it difficult for us, for us to vote, okay? Um, to really be able to change our own lives, mm-hmm. okay? And then as time progresses, you know, we have the civil rights movement. We start, you know, things start progressing very, very slowly. But every time we take a step forward, they kick us back three steps. Okay? Fast forward up into my lifetime in the 80s. Now, you got to think about this, right? No black folks that I knew, no black folks that my parents knew or my grandparents knew had the wealth or the resources to bring in crack cocaine or bring in cocaine from out, out of this country. Facts. It was brought in by white folks. It was brought in by the federal government, okay, to really fund a war, okay? Now... Where did they push that into black communities that were already, you know, in poverty. impoverished, right? Now, it's destroying our black people, right? Mm-hmm. Now, what are they doing? If you're caught with any crack or using any crack or anything associated with crack, they're locking you up and they're giving you 30-year minimums, 40-year minimum sentences, Life. right? This started with Ronald Reagan. Mandatory minimums, dare say no to drugs, but they threw us in prison. People that were on drugs were sick. They needed help. But they threw them in prison. You got folks that are still in prison from the 80s from some of these drug offenses, some of them minor. Mm-hmm. Now, you could have the same amount of crack, which is made of cocaine, as you do cocaine, which was actually the white folks' drug. Mm-hmm. And they would get probation, meaning the white people would get probation. They would send the black people to 30 or 40 years in prison. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mandatory minimums and stuff like that. 
So what they were doing is this was happening because we didn't have black folks, black families didn't have a lot of jobs, right? We didn't have a lot of resources. They made it very difficult. So you got, you know, those elements to start going to drug dealing, okay, as a way to make key, uh, make money and make a living. Mm-hmm. Now, you can argue whether it was wrong or right. You know, some people argue, you know, they had to make a living, whatever the case may be. Survival. Survival. I'm not saying it's wrong or I agree with it. What I'm saying is the prison sentences and the things that happened to them were disproportionate to the crime. Unfair. Right? So you're, you're busing and getting rid of all the black fathers in the communities, locking them up, locking them up. And it wasn't just drugs. Prior to this, you know, they're arresting us for murders that we didn't commit and convicting us. Mm-hmm. No black people on the jury. Convicting our black men. Sending them to prison for crimes they didn't commit. They're being sentenced to death. Some of them, if they're lucky, they get out and we find out that they weren't guilty. Hold on. To, to also, to add to what he was saying, when they go and go to court, right, and the jury's all white. It's not being judged by a group of your peers. Right, right. But, 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 defender that. Right, but I want to say this. Well, how come your people didn't go and be... Well, mind Selected. you, during that 300 year, 20 years during slavery, if you was caught reading and learn, learn, learn how to read all that stuff, you were killed. You, you understand that? So when, by the time they let us free from slavery, we had to start from ground zero of our, of, of our own education. But guess what? You have 304 years plus of a knowledge and experience to be to be those judges, to be the lawyers, to be the cops, to be everyone in control and 400 power. year head start. Mm-hmm. So, so when those people go 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 to jail for that one ounce of crack, or whatever, and they get sentenced for 30, 40 years, because the system it was not it was not fair. It wasn't designed for us. Could do what you say. I, I want to make that very clear. People say, well, so why don't you go to school and do this? So the system wasn't designed for us, right? And as we made progress, we were always taken back. But now in the 80s, I'm passionate about this because in the 80s, so many fathers were taken from the community and sent to prison, right? Now think about it this way. Then you got kids that are having kids because the mothers are left with these kids that are being raised by single mothers that got to work two, three jobs. So these kids are raising themselves, right? And they're susceptible to a lot of the bad things that happen in impoverished areas, whether it be a white impoverished area, a black one, or a Hispanic one, okay, or an Asian. End of the day, you know, you got fathers that are gone. When they come home, if they come home, right, if they come home, you know. I, I want, let, let me just, uh, wanna, go ahead and jump wanna, in, by all wanna means. Add, I want to I wanna add a little color to that part. Because it, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, because, <laughs> because, because it's important to understand that with welfare, Welfare was created for white people, but when they offered it to black people, because of poverty, black women chose the government over black men. Mm. So that's why there were no fathers in the house in the 80s, because in the 70s, black women had to choose between being dirt poor or having a roof over their head. But you can't have a man and a roof over your head, and black women made that choice. Not saying they're right. This is just what happened. So when you get to the 80s, there are no fathers. Some of them in jail, some of them hustling or whatever. But the family breakdown already has started because of that decision in the 60s and 70s. And, and what he's saying, he picked up what he's saying. So all those fathers that was in jails during the 80s who had kids that dad wasn't there, the little girls the little boys saw that mom was the head of the house doing everything, right? Mm-hmm. So because them kids didn't have their parents growing up, now they're our ages because they're born in the 80s. Now they're in the 20s, late 20s and 30s. Seeing that, well, I don't need a man to survive. I see my mom do it, right? Exactly. Women. The cycle has started, and we, yep. we're trying to pull that cycle back, but y'all understand the concept. Everybody want to say, yes, there is some men out there who don't do what they're supposed to do. Correct, but it's not absolute. Just like there's a woman out there who don't do their job, but it's not absolute. But majority of the time, women, y'all take advantage of that legal system. Y'all kick the man out and get paid. Y'all know if you kick a man out and get rid of him, it's a win for you. You get, a, you get a paycheck from him or a paycheck from the system. You're well, winning. It's, it's short-sighted. Good, continue. In addition to that, you got the young men and the boys that grew up. Mm-hmm. And they a woman can't teach a man how to be a man. Facts. Not to say that in some cases in a single-family home, men don't grow up and they make it or they turn into, you know, good men or whatever. They picked it up somewhere, but in a lot of cases, for the most part, a woman can't truly teach a man how to be a man. And because a man hasn't been taught how to be a man... When he comes and he dates your daughter, you know, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Okay, so he's learning this from the elements in the community, the bad elements, or he's picking it up from what he sees on TV and B 
BET or MTV and the video. TikToks and social media. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case may be. So he's treating your, he doesn't know what it's like to be a man. Okay, so he's running and impregnated all these women and leaving, and then it's another hit. Again, the cycle goes on and on. More mm-hmm. kids without fathers. Let me, let me say, I want to say something. Something that I did growing up, before I could talk to a woman or get to really go on a date with a girl, I had to go in the house and get to meet mom and dad. I had to meet the parents before I can take the girl out on a date. Mm-hmm. That doesn't change. Now, I'm not saying ask for a hand in marriage. I'm asking you, hey, I'm, 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 hi, I'm Dwayne. Uh, we're going to go to the movie. We're going to go to Lowe's. We're going to get something to eat, and I'll have her back around 10 o'clock. Whatever, whatever time I was allowed to have her back, I was told she needed to be back at this time. And that's how I navigate. He said Lowe's. Lo- oh, AMC, <laughs> movie theaters. <laughs> Sorry, I'm from Pittsburgh. We have a place called Lowe's. Anyway, oh, movie theater long. called AMC. But the point I'm trying to make is that we went away from that. Now girls just go out whatever they want, with and dilly. And like it's, what Chris Boy was saying, men don't know how to treat women. That's why I heard well, doing X, Y, Z. Well, continue and, to break now, because where you at right now, you jumped about a decade. I know, I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> Keep going, Chris. But, but, yeah. but, but, hold on, but one last thing, because he says, for, for your women who listen to the show right now, and you might be in your feelings when he said, woman can't raise a man, if he's wrong, here's a challenge. Give your son a tie, tell him to tie it. If he can't do it, okay, you're doing an okay job. If you can't do it, you fell him. And when I say a tie, I'm talking about a tie go around his neck. Continue. Not a clip on. Not a clip so, on. So, in other words, black men are not in the communities, right? Mm-hmm. Without the black man, which is the foundation, the community is going to collapse. Mm-hmm. So I had to talk to my buddy. His name is Josh. Okay, I had to explain to him because of that. You know, you're. You know, people say, "Well, you have all of the opportunities that we have. How come you have not reached this level yet? Or well, how, how come you you have not achieved this level?" Okay, and I had to explain to him because. You all have a three or four hundred year head start. <laughs> when you went to school, your parents had money because they were able to buy houses. They had equity, which is, you know, helps them build Credit. wealth, mm-hmm. right? So they have these things that we don't have. We have families that couldn't afford houses or didn't have houses, you know, or, or could not buy could not, not buy houses because they wouldn't allow us to buy houses in certain communities for a long time. Red line, you know. So I mean, end of the day. Um, I I grew up a little different. You know, I was fortunate enough to, to have my father in my life, right? Mm-hmm. Now, before I had my father in my life, I was with my mother. And that side of my family had a different element to it, an element you don't want to grow up around. Mm-hmm. And I knew as a kid, I looked up to a lot of those cousins and things, and if I had grown up in that atmosphere, I would have been something else. You've been a I probably would have been mm-hmm. in prison, I would have had a bunch of kids. Mm-hmm. Um, God knows what would have happened. Probably, maybe did. When my father came into my life and raised me, he taught me how to be a man. He taught me responsibility and everything that I needed to know to be successful. Taught and me was right it, from wrong. How was to it accept easy? accountability. It wasn't easy. Huh? Seth, we talked about earlier. But the reason, Dad. the reason I respect my father, mm-hmm. okay, is because he didn't have to come get me. I was going to be a ward of the state. So he didn't have to come get me. Some fathers would have said, no, nah. I mean, it is what it mm-hmm. is. Because my mother told me, told him I wasn't his, and she knew I was. So he didn't have to. He was dating a woman at the time that said, we're going to go have our own family, leave him where he is. But as a man, he did the right thing and came and, and took me in and taught me. When I came, I was eight. I didn't know how to eat properly with a spoon or a fork mm-hmm. or how to hold a spoon or a fork. My God. Okay? Now, he taught me the things I needed. He taught me how to be a man. He taught me how to treat women. He taught, taught me how to be an independent thinker. And, I, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I grew up as a, a decent man. Okay? Teach your I horn. Avoided, I avoided a lot of the pitfalls that a lot of brothers in our community fall into, whether it be the drugs or women, uh, women or things of that nature. Okay? I can tell you, you know, I don't have any nothing against people that smoke weed. Right? Mm-hmm. In some places, it's becoming legal whatever, whatever, whatever. Me personally, is not my thing. But I was, he taught me at an early age that that habit, they use that habit. Now, they may let white kids off with warnings and little minor things or probation, or, you know. With us, they use that as a gateway to lock us up and take our freedom and give us felonies. When you have a felony and you mm. come out of jail, it's very difficult to get a job mm. or to make a living. Even if you can get a job but make a, a decent enough living, 
So what happens is a lot of brothers go back to crime or doing things a criminal. You go in jail, you don't come out. You probably come out a better criminal. You know what I mean? So it's it's a way to wait. Wait, wait. in the eighties, they used to actually come out better people. That was the eighties. Now the prisons are about. They could take classes when you think about it. Oh, that's good. Prisons, right? Prisons. A lot of people don't realize it. Prisons make money. They generate money. They use prison labor, which is another form of slavery. So what do they do? Bust all the black people into prison Mm -hmm. on trumped up charges, fake charges, and it becomes free labor because you're. You don't belong, or you belong to the state or the government. Facts. And a lot of companies actually pay prisons for prison labor. All it is is a different form of slavery. Mm-hmm. Okay? So my point being, and I get off my soapbox because I know I'm talking too much, but oh, you run it. You pretty much, much. Yeah, pretty much, you know, they use these different avenues and different things. Even if you listen to politics now, a lot of us don't listen to politics because they think, you know, we can't change anything, or my vote doesn't change this. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> they use these laws, and they seem minuscule until you dig into them. But what they do is they use these laws to disenfranchise us and take our rights, okay? And what's happening is enough of our brothers and sisters, you know, are just trying to make it, right? And we're not getting involved as much as we should in the politics, so the people making all the decisions are those other people that hate us or want to use us, uh, and we're letting them do it, in other words, okay? We're not wise enough. We don't have enough knowledge. We're ignorant to the, the really the true workings of the world. Even speaking to my brother, his grandmother was a mayor for years, and the things that she went to to vote and to become mayor, and the, you know, Back if in her time. Right. If, if she's 99 today, still alive, if she heard him say these foolish things, break her heart. it would break her heart. He wouldn't vote and said he's not voting because either one of the candidates he doesn't like and his vote's not going to count anyway. Think about this. If the this election here in Georgia, mm-hmm. the two senators that won this last election, Ossoff and what was the other one, Warnock, mm-hmm. won s- slightly. Okay, slightly. Okay, if millions of black young black men or black folks in general feel that way, those numbers can sway a race. Okay, easily. Now think about it this way: they're now, if it wasn't important and our votes didn't count, why are they changing all these laws to take away and make it more difficult for us to vote? They're trying to draw the vote, the lines of districts and stuff like this to benefit them. They're trying to sway everything to benefit them. Okay. End of the day, you know, and I'm, I'm, this can spiral into a lot of different areas. Ultimately, you know, the point being, I explained this all to Josh, right? And it gave him a little, a little better outlook on really what's happening um, and why, you know, because, you know, for some white folks, you know, they're full of hate, right? Others are ignorant as hell. They might mean well. They don't know. But, but they're ignorant, excuse me for cursing, they're ignorant to the fact of what really goes on in our community because they're so insulated, okay? No, well, I call it, I call it willful, willful ignorance. Willful ignorance, I you, agree with you. Well, it doesn't, you it's, know. It's some, all available. You, you have to actively avoid learning this. But stuff. you know this from experience. <laughs> some people, they operate in their bubble, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't bother them or inconvenience them, they're not concerned about it because it's not bothering them. So they don't take it upon themselves to look into it until it affects them personally, right? So, you know, as I started breaking this down to him, he starts saying, okay, I see where you're going, and I see why you feel this way. Like, he asked me sometimes about some of these murders or some of the, and I call them murders with these police killings and shootings and so on and so forth. That's but they've been call. doing this forever. forever to us. The difference is that now... You know, before social media, Mm -hmm. if you lived in Georgia, this happened in L.A. somewhere, a lot of times you wouldn't hear it because the media wouldn't pick it up, right? Right. But it has happened across the country in these small towns and these areas for eons. It's happened. It continues to happen. We're just now starting to hear about it because social media makes these things more available. You now have cameras and smartphones and things like that, so you're capturing it. Mm -hmm. But think about it if it happened before then. The cop would write up his report, which is mostly a lie. And that's all that would get played. The black family wouldn't hear anything, wouldn't be heard at all. I got one thing to add to that as a positive. In Colorado, they just passed a law, if you saw it. Um, if the police officer turns off his body cam, his testimony will not 
be admit, admissible. And that's that's that should be true. I mean, that should be everywhere across the board. But yeah, I like across that. the board because yeah. you know, end of the day, you know, they take their word. Let's let's keep it one hundred, right? This country was not designed for us. These laws were not written for us. This justice system wasn't designed for us. It's doing what it was supposed to do, which is serve them, right? Uh, we talk about fair and everything being equitable. The reality is we got to fight for everything that we get, right? Um, everyone was so happy about this conviction for George Floyd, right? The reality is the fact that there was still some uncertainty about whether this man would be found guilty after what we saw with our own eyes is unbelievable. Right. The fact that he was only given 22 years and may only have to do 15 is unfathomable because you got folks out here that are doing 30 years for a little bit of weed or minimal, minimal stuff. Like the young black brother that killed another young black man during a, a drug transaction of marijuana, a small amount of marijuana. His young brother killed another brother, which is sad. Mm-hmm. He's facing more time than this police officer. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. But nevertheless, you know, I digress. The system itself, I mean, mm-hmm. truly, we talk about black men, right? And, you know, we, in, you know, I'm out. since I've been on the show, <laughs> we talk about black women and the relationships we have with each other. End of the day, the black men, are they're the foundation, whether you like it or not. If you build us up, we will all rise together. You know, we need to build each other up. And stop, because really what they do is, and my grandmother said this, my grandfather and my parents say this, every other nationality, they help each other, okay? The white folks help the white folks, the Asians help the Asians, the Hispanics help the Hispanics. In our community, we don't help each other. We don't support each other, okay? If we see somebody else getting out, we try to pull them down. Or if you have some black folks that make it and make it out, they want to just be the big dog. Very seldom do they ever want to reach their hand down and help pull somebody else up. We don't help each other, right? We don't help educate each other. We don't help put each other in a better position, you know. Uh, there's a lot of willful ignorance, you know. But uh, See, oh, go ahead. I'll let one okay. of you guys take well, it. No, I just, I just wanna, I just wanna add color because you know I'm always on that point. I don't, I understand about the black men and women not helping. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. Prior to, I don't want, I don't want to say that integration was the worst thing to happen to us, but. I do at this point. I, I firmly believe that Martin Luther King is wrong. Okay, his his the movement, while it sounds good on paper, set us up for this because the here basic human nature. Me and you are hunting for the same, uh, are hunting for a, a lion. I mean, a, a gazelle. I don't mm-hmm. care. Okay, you have a spear. I have a rock. You have an advantage in that hunt. Right. Is it in your best interest to give me that spear? Absolutely not. Why? Because your survival depends on you you having having that spear. And unfortunately for me, it is an advantage to to, for you, you. and it's a detriment to me because I'm not going to get that gazelle with a rock. Right. Well, that's the same for power. That's the same for money. White people see us. White people see power as a gazelle. They have the numbers. They have the system. They can control the system. They can maintain power. It's not in their best interest to feed us. The, the means to acquire that power. So it, it's real. I don't even, I used to get mad at white supremacy. I don't know anymore. It, it simply is what it is. As long as we're in their country, why, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you my wallet and say, hey man, go buy me, go go take care of me and be, and what you gonna do? You gonna say, I'll take care of this fool right after I pay my car note, my right. mortgage, right. and then you get the crumbs. That's right. what America dishes out to people of color. Right. You get the crumbs. And the only problem is that America also takes a good, a, um, it takes a real interest in who gets those crumbs, a.k.a. let's be 100%. You broke down the black family. You destroyed the black church and the black community, and you rose up athletes, movie stars, and drug dealers to literally the pinnacle of alpha maleness in the black community. The worst group, of, listen, I love my, I love football, basketball, and all that. But literally, for the most part, the worst group of people to be role models is who you gave the money to. Right. You get you got Cardi B as the role model for women. Who in their right mind wants Cardi B to be the, the role, role model, model for, for their a little daughter? Girl? Okay. 
But Cardi B's a millionaire. How much? How much money Rihanna worth? You know, I don't. I've seen Rihanna. How, how much money is Kim Kardashian worth? Right. You chose who you gave these crumbs to. Right. I think it's. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that that somebody like P Diddy is worth more than Barack Obama. Even though I got my own issues with Barack Obama, the point being is. You got professors, you got you got activists who would actually change the community that's struggling. A few years ago, they were trying to do that Martin Luther King monument at um, in Washington, D.C. They needed $10 million. I remember this, it was like 2002, 2003. They needed $10 million. They struggled to get $10 million. At that time, Oprah was headed towards a billionaire. You, <laughs> Michael, Jordan, Michael Jordan could have paid for that out of chump change. But no, they were struggling to get the money to build that. I don't like Umar Johnson because I think he's a grifter. But I'm like, but I'm gonna go with his idea. He was trying to put together a black school and all that, right? Mm -hmm. He struggled for donations. But Bob Johnson could have paid for that out of the po- out of his pocket change. Former owner of BET. There yeah. you go. Yeah. He could pay, but he didn't. Oprah, and I'm, Oprah, Cree is a multi billionaire. She had her own network. But at the end of the day, did she don't did she turn her network over to be ran by the black community? Nope. Who she sell it to? Was it Viacom? She sold for pennies and a dollar. Yeah, pennies and a dollar. She instead of instead of keeping that because the white community, this is the problem with poverty. And we once I do it, you I'll, I'm gonna say something that's gonna be once again selfish. But blacks, black actors, you, Denzel, he might do a whole bunch behind the scenes, but he ain't a leader. Um, LeBron, I like LeBron. I like what he's trying to do, but the whole NBA ain't behind him. Right. LeBron, or, or, or us, not me. I'm a, but our people. We, yeah. Continue, continue. Well, I mean, I'm just. Th- I ain't trying to go the whole sports route, but right. it's like Jay-Z. the hate is real. I love some Jay Z. He created title. We thought we were gonna have it for us. Jay Z sold it and took the money. Right. Way to go, Jay Z. Once again, selfish. Right. They and they've told them we'll give you the money. That's what I said. But you don't get to raise, no, but the people even that gave the crimes to, you don't get to raise up your own people. If you do something, at the end of the day, you got to give it back to us. And mm. these people who they gave the crimes to are listening. And if we don't follow the rules, if we try to actually yeah, step Cosby, out. Bill Cosby. I was about, he was exactly what I was about to say. Yeah, about the Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. Everybody want to say Bill Cosby raped these women. I'm not even going to get into the, the mentality of how wrong Great. that was. Great. I'm not even going to get into the mentality of how Me long that was. Real. I'm going to make sure that y'all understand. Every time Bill Cosby has had a hiccup in his life, he was trying to advance the black community. Yeah. Right? When they, when his illegitimate daughter popped up years a, a couple, two decades ago, he was trying to buy a TV, TV station. They shot him down. This time, he was trying to buy NBC. He was, he was on the verge of being able to get the funding to buy NBC, a, a national broadcast. All of a sudden, 60 women... Women from the sixties came up and said he was he was raping them. Right. Two years in prison. They sent him to prison right on now. a shaky case. That case was so shaky and fluky. I'm like, and the look, victim. He did two years in prison. Yep. He out right now. He can still get his money back, but his ability to make those kind of moves is gone. They are gone. Okay. The legacy. We, we see mm-hmm. this. It's, it's the story of legacy. That's all I wanted to do. Exactly. Yep. And and I and this is my, now I'm about to say some stuff that's controversial, but this is how I feel. Because in the absence of, of, of the patriarchy, they move in a lot of black women into positions of power. You know what I'm saying? You move in a lot of black women into positions of power. Black women have proven time and time again, unfortunately for us, they can't be trusted to move in the best interest of the black community when they're in positions of power. Black Lives Matter, anybody? <laughs> we, we're going to put that on the table. We're going we're gonna to talk about Kamala Harris. You bet, y'all better. You better do a little research. I got a negative view of her, but when it was came time for her to choose to be with somebody, she didn't choose us. She chose she chose a DA of a different complexion, and it ain't no DA of a different complexion that ever been on our side ever. ever. You know what I'm saying? Stacy Abrams, go Stacy. But who you really work for, Stacy? Cause I'm just saying you 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 could have been you could have been the senator. Instead of Warnock having to pull that weight, you could have ran and won quite easily. But now, what you trying to do? She trying to run. I think for she's going to run again. for giving again. I think yeah. she's going to run. She's going to try. And I like her though. Why? So I actually had a conversation with her. Okay. Um, you know, 
the stuff that actually happened during this election, mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you, flipping Georgia was, was her. It was her. Though. It was. I give her that. It was her. You know, so, you know, I don't agree with some of her politics. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't agree with agree with anybody's politics totally, but, <laughs> you know, overall, you know, there's some, that's some stuff we've needed for so long, but nobody has been able to pull it off. Um, I never thought that I would live to see the day that Georgia turned blue. You know, I'm going to tell you, like, I'm not big on politicians in general because I believe they flip-flop and they blow whatever way the wind, you know, blow. I personally think, I, I personally think white people are white people. I don't care what your political I, agenda is. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm true. I'm, I'm with you there. I do like, I like Ossoff. You know, a young... I like what he said. I like what he said. He I like it. But, you know, John Lewis, you know, he... For 47 years, he didn't really do nothing either. Yeah. He sounded great. Though. He sounded good, but he... I mean, he was marching. He Like, he was marching with King. They did some things that I think furthered yeah. us to some degree. Yeah. But two in steps. Washington, I will too... Step three steps back? Yeah, but you got to look at it. When you're in Washington and they pull you in, you got Democrats and Republicans and you're black. It's you're not going. It's very hard to get bills passed. You can see right now, Mitch McConnell is blocking every bill he can, mm-hmm. or he was. You know what I mean? Still, really blocking it because of Mansion. But hey, ain't Mansion a Democrat? He's Once only again, in name only, in Once name again, only, in it, name it, only. White people is white people. Ain't nobody trying to give up power. They working yeah, together to maintain exactly to maintain able. power, maintain that role, and get paid. It's mm-hmm. really what it is. So you do have some in there. I feel like that are trying to make change, but I think it's so few that they can't. They're limited as to what they can do, Mm -hmm. Um, which is why they need to get rid of the filibuster. But, you know, my thing is I feel like we need to have more of a role in politics. Because black folks, the only time, you know, you hear them coming because they want our vote. But we need to actively take a role. There's There's plenty of young, intelligent brothers and sisters that can do what these folks do. These white folks in these offices have them. I mean, look at that Marjorie Taylor well, it's, Green. It's, 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 She's an idiot. Well, the problem is She's this. She's an evil idiot. But yeah. see, the problem is this. Our, uh, it's, it's based on parenting and education because we're, te- we're, we're raising our kids. Oh, be a basketball player, football player, sports the route. No one's telling the kids, you need to be a lawyer. You need to be the next demo, you know, government. You need police officer, chief. Not, not police officer, but... They're not. Right. They're, well, they're not being so, raised to go in those positions. Well, and, and, I'm and the saying, money is good there too. If you if you do well, a little research, those positions they are in, they're getting good money. Well, so if you worry about the money, look into those positions. Well, no, I wanna I wanna argue because this is something I had a conversation about. I'm trying to get my mind right to have this put it on video. Seven it's, a, minutes. it's about it's about selfishness. Right yeah, now. seven minutes. It's about selfishness and greed. Because it's fine if I, if I raise my kid to be a politician, but I raise them to be selfish. I'm gonna, be about re- I'm gonna regret that decision. If I raise head. a lawyer, but he's selfish and he's only concerned about getting his bag, that's the thing, getting the bag. Right. If he's concerned about getting the bag, more so, I'm not gonna knock Kamala Harris. She's the vice president, but as as a DA, she was way she more was concerned right. about progressing her career, advancing her go, career, than what yeah. was co- what was good for the black community. It got her where she at, but I'm scared of her. I'm scared of what, what happens right. if Joe gets sick. Gets sick. So, yeah, so, you know, and I guess, you know, if you look at it, you want to play devil's advocate, you can say, well, if they don't, you know, if somebody's greasing somebody's hand or somebody's sacrificing to, you know, now what she, has she done all these things to get in a position where she can truly make a change? That has yet to be seen, right? Exactly. You know, so we don't know. But I think collectively as a community, number one, there's a lot of changes that got to take place. You know what I mean? But ultimately, we got to really start strengthening our families again. Yes. Because you got to think about it. You know, even as far as politics, most black families were, cons- were very conservative. Yes, we are. Very conservative, right? It's just the damn Republicans are so racist that we just can't, you know what I mean? They, it's just outwardly quit, racist. If they quit calling us ends, right. you probably would get, the, probably black, get the, you the black would, vote. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell white people this, and I'm, I'm going to be honest. If you stop calling us the N-word, and stop and making us feel stupid for supporting you. You almost got the black male vote, right? You, you can split the black male vote, right? Because I'm because I'm conservative in a lot of my views. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I don't think anybody fits into one or two boxes. So there's a right. spectrum, right? So you can swing, you can go either way. The, that pendulum can go either way. Mm-hmm. But by and large, you know, I was raised in church, so there's a lot of things, especially along the religious, mm-hmm. you know, line that the fundamental. Fundamental. Yep, I'm more conservative, right? So 
you know, I mean, but ultimately, I think our biggest problem is the destruction of the black family. Mm -hmm. Because now, now, with the things our children glorify is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the music videos and the OnlyFans and the, the young men are glorifying these rappers and with their pants hanging down and the stupid, silly mm -hmm. stuff that comes out of their mouth on a regular basis. And, you know, it's just, it's not really furthering our community. It's really a hindrance, you know. Um, so, well, I think... We're gonna, we, we should put a pin in it. We should put a pin in I, it. We can come back to this. Go, we'll but I want to say two. one thing because I let you slide the whole conversation without saying the one thing that is, the, that is the main, one of the main problems in the black community. What's that? What's Child that? support. <laughs> that, no, that, I'm what's not, that, I'm not, what's that for part two? Yeah, yeah, we, that's part two because part it, two, it ain't about the child support specifically as in it's the fact that it, is, it, it by itself estranges men from women. It is nothing positive about child support. And the moment you get on child support, so many things come into play right. that you are frustrated and angry and you, you actively don't like the person on the other side. And that lasts for 18, 20 years. That right there destroys the, our community. So to touch this before opinion. we quit it. <laughs> yes. But you know what, man? I will say this. Even mm -hmm. though, and I'm going to tell you, I, I might... I, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm about to know this extremely well. Oh, Lord. Okay? So, the whole child support thing and the whole divorce thing, because I'm going through it personally, but there is no way in hell, I don't care how much I hate the mother, right? Mm -hmm. And that I'm going to, I do everything I can for my son. The reason being for me is I know what that kid, what could have happened to me if my dad, my dad wasn't there, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to do everything I can in my power to be mm -hmm. there for my son. Now, I will say, with me only having having him for the summer for six weeks mm -hmm. and a week for spring break and a week or two for Christmas or Thanksgiving totally is not right. a lot. So the influence I can have on him is mm -hmm. limited. It's However, okay. I'm going to try to be as impactful as I can, mm -hmm. but at the same time, what's more than likely going to happen is he's going to get to an age where she can't control it and she's going to send it to me. And I pray that he's not old enough or so too far. old, too far gone mm -hmm. that I can't Reach still him. have a positive impact on his life and ensure or do my best to ensure that he turns into a, a good man mm -hmm. and productive to society and you know to the point to where he doesn't harm himself or end up mm -hmm. in prison or get swallowed up whole by the system as a black man right mm -hmm. so I mean I'm not going to let her because that's my flesh and blood you know what yeah. I mean at the end of the day yeah. so it does make it difficult and I'm with you a thousand percent yeah. But, you know, some brothers look for excuses and things like that. Yeah, I'm just no, not one of them brothers. You no, know what no. I mean? Well, see, the other part, and I, I know we got to go see it. Part I, two, part I two. I like you, you, support, but I just want to throw this on the table. Dude, then you got to leave. Is, it, ain't, it ain't just about him because I respect what you're doing for your son. Yeah. But the other half of that equation is you are now in an adversarial contest with her. Absolutely. And that right there, that's the fight. You still got to struggle, but the right. fight is you right. are in an adversarial confrontation with her. Absolutely across, right. And too many of us are doing just that. Exactly. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is part one. <laughs> we'll see you next week for part two. It's a great conversation. <laughs> Quest Boogie, Seth Darchow, thanks for tuning in for the show today. That was great. We out. Yes, sir.